Welcome to chapter four of the Persuasion Series 32 Jackpot Marketing Secrets from History's Greatest and Craziest Persuaders with David Lowenthal. Um, today our chapter is the little known persuasion secret discovered by an infamous atheist that will put you in the fast lane to dominate your market. Now the infamous atheist I'm referring to is none other than Sam Harris. Now, if you follow politics or political conversations or political podcasts or anything, social commentary and all that, you've probably heard the name Sam Harris. Now, he's an interesting guy. He, I believe he studied uh, neurology and kind of, he might have even been a brain surgeon, something to do with kind of uh, neurology and studying of the brain, but in the early 2000s, he got his mark by writing a lot of polemical books against Christianity, specifically uh, against American evangelical Christianity that created a lot of enemies uh, on the right for him. Now he tends to target more uh, talk about uh, Islam and the um, dangers of Islamic radicalism. A lot of people agree with them, a lot of people don't agree with them. Purpose of this video is not to take a side in either of those fights, but it's more to talk about why he's become very popular. Because whether you love him or whether you hate him, he's become extremely popular. Now, this is another lesson, but that lesson of polarization is also something that you should keep in mind, that you don't want people to be lukewarm about you. You want people to either love or you hate you. Regardless, the thing that I'm going to talk about with you today is a secret that he stumbled into on a monologue on one of his podcasts that it was, you know, just something he was kind of riffing on that I thought was extremely effective and helped me think about my business and persuasion and how to niche. Because essentially, the secret that I'm going to reveal to you, that I'm going to reveal to you right now, is not necessarily being the best in your, in your market in an absolute way. Being the best podcaster or the best copywriter or the best entrepreneur or the best public speaker. You, that may be you, um, but f chances are if, if you're watching this, that's not you. Um, and that's never going to be you. Um, that's never going to be me. That's never going to be most of the people in the world. There's only a select few who could be that. But what gets you to be uh, in a great position of influence and wealth and power is not necessarily if you're the best of the best of the best, but do you combine elements? Because that's what he talks about in this monologue, and I'll summarize for you here. He says, you know, I'm not the best uh, neurologist out there. I'm not the best scientist out there. I'm not the, the best scholar on Islam. I'm not the best uh, practicer of meditation. I'm not the most knowledgeable person about psychedelics. But when you combine all of those things together, somebody who can speak uh, knowingly and persuasively and competently and interestingly on all of those topics, the margin for competition is much smaller. Not very many people can speak competently on all those, uh, on all those topics. And I think right there he revealed, whether he intended to or not, a really great insight into why he is so successful at what he does. And so I would just ask people who are listening to this, think about all of the things that you can combine into one. When you are, you know, doing your, your, your business, if you've got a podcast, if you've got a video channel, if you've got a, an email list, if you've got a customer base, what are, what are different elements that you can combine to, to form something that is absolutely unique, that nobody can really take all of these elements and combine them in interesting ways that you can. So that is the lesson of, uh, of today in chapter four. Uh, combine different interests, different desires in your market that you can speak to into one. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.